So this is going to be a kind of a climate change video with a bit of a twist. It's not the humans. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat intriguing discovery that I guess not a lot of people expected in regards to methane. One of the most common and also one of the most potent greenhouse gases. But before we talk about what was discovered in the recent study and what all of this means, I actually wanted to start with a bit of an explanation in regards to planet Earth and the cycles of glaciation. The cycles that basically once in a while create these really, really large ice sheets, much larger than anything we have right now, covering a large part of the planet. And although normally in the media this is sometimes referred to as the Ice Age, in reality this is still the Ice Age. We are still in it even today. Although a more proper scientific name for this is Quaternary Glaciation. Something that began approximately 2.6 million years ago with the appearance of the first glacial period with many studies focusing on ice cores from Antarctica, establishing a kind of a cooling trend with at least two separate cycles, one being 41,000 years, one being 100,000 years, creating a somewhat repetitive pattern of ice sheet growth followed by decay, with the cycle usually varying between 80,000 and 120,000 years, 100,000 being the average. And from this graph you can actually see that the major glaciation finished approximately 12,000 years ago. But Earth was very likely even hotter than today, roughly around 140 to maybe 130,000 years ago, with the volume of ice even being lower than today. And this last interglacial period is of course super intriguing because that's when essentially a lot of different hominids lived on the planet, with early human ancestors and all of our cousins like Neanderthals and Denisovans coexisting on a slightly different Earth. And unfortunately all of the details of this prehistory has been mostly lost to us because of powerful effects from various glaciers that covered the area that basically erased a lot of the signs of early civilizations. On top of this, many of these civilizations reached their peak when the Earth was extremely different in terms of the levels of the oceans. And assuming that all of these ancient hominids lived in a similar way to modern humans, basically somewhere along the coast very close to the water, they would live on a very different planet. Back then, the Mediterranean was very different. There was not as much water, and the British Isles were more or less connected to Europe. So for example, hominids like Neanderthals potentially existed in these locations, but all of their ancient settlements have been now erased, covered entirely by water. More intriguingly, something similar happened right here in Australia, and there's even evidence from various oral traditions of Australian aboriginals that actually do suggest that there was quite a lot of people living somewhere right here where there's now ocean. Here the water levels might have been even lower. But these were not just humans, these were all sorts of different hominids, and potentially communicating and trading, or maybe killing each other, competing for territory. With this particular region, Southeast Asia, potentially being extremely interesting, because it didn't have a lot of ice caps, but suddenly had this huge area of land available for everyone to settle. This is actually where unusual hobbit-like creatures, sometimes referred to as the Forest Men, were originally discovered back in 2003 and potentially thrived here 50 to 60,000 years ago. So this was definitely an intriguing period that, unfortunately, only resulted in one single survivor. Yeah, us. We survived, everyone else seemed to have perished. Now there's definitely signs of DNA from these species in a lot of different cultures around the planet, implying of course that there was a lot of hanky-panky going on, but all of this suddenly ended 12,000 years ago. But what's interesting about this recent cycle is the fact that approximately 6,000 years ago, for some reason Earth stopped warming up and stopped melting the rest of the ice. But this is of course based on orbital modeling, not necessarily samples from Antarctica. And the reason I'm mentioning orbital modeling is because this is generally the most accepted explanation for why we have these interglacial periods. The idea of Milankovitch cycles, slight shifts in orbital parameters of planet Earth that basically affect obliquity, precession and eccentricity of the planet as it orbits the Sun. And so for roughly around 6,000 years now, humans on Earth sort of got lucky. We suddenly received this relatively stable climate that didn't really change very much, allowing various civilizations on the planet to suddenly explode, developing the culture we have today. Now that's kind of the general assumption, we obviously have no idea exactly what happened, but it's always been believed that Milankovitch cycles sort of affect a lot of things, and luckily for humans, this cycle was predicted to be somewhat moderate, with the next potential glaciation happening maybe in the next 50 to 70,000 years. For example, various sedimental studies determined that the sea levels rose by about 130 meters between 20,000 and 6,000 years ago, 
but they generally stop rising afterwards. Here's sort of the graph that shows us how the sea level has changed in the last 20,000 years. But during every one of these cycles, glaciation cycles, if you actually look at the graph, they all had this very strange period known as termination. This graph helps you visualize this a little bit better. They represent these very unusual jumps in temperature, extremely steep jumps in temperature, that definitely occurred several times. And today we know that termination is a major event when it comes to reorganization of Earth's climate system. They very often occur in three separate stages. First stage is a rise in methane and CO2, second stage global warming, usually over a few thousand years, and the last stage a sharp increase in temperature normally fueled by a burst of methane that then lasts for several thousand years again. You can read more about these particular events in the study you can find in the description from 2008. And so these termination events, which do take several thousand years, strangely very often have this very sudden stage that lasts only a few decades. It's the last stage that then ends with a major release of methane that increases temperatures even more for thousands of years. And that's also the stage when usually the levels of water rise dramatically, most of the ice melts on the planet, and as you can see from this graph, the planet becomes just a little bit toastier, up to 3 to 4 degrees hotter. And based on various sediments, we know that last time this happened, places like tundra essentially turned tropical and had a tremendous amount of really strange creatures roaming the surface. So for example, things like this. Glyptodons. Size of a small car, resembling strange mixture between a turtle and an armadillo. We'll be discussing more of them in a video in the future. Make sure to subscribe. But here's the important fact. Even though I'm basically talking about history, or technically prehistory, it actually seems to apply to what's happening right now. And no, I'm not talking about CO2 levels, I'm not talking about anything political, I'm actually talking about something that was recently observed and doesn't really have a good explanation just yet. So here's what the new paper basically found. When it comes to global levels of methane, we know that various human emissions mostly soared in the 80s, but generally stabilized by the 90s. A lot of this was actually due to various regulations, but also various technologies that sort of improved our ability to extract methane without causing a lot of it to be released. And so since then, for several decades, the levels were somewhat constant. Which is basically why a lot of people sort of stopped talking about methane as a potential source of warming of planet Earth. But for some reason, something happened in the late 2006. The methane started dramatically rising again, even accelerating its growth, speeding up all of the emissions even higher than they used to be. But that's despite data suggesting that the human emissions most likely decreased. Or at least there was no dramatic shift in human activity anywhere on the planet. So yeah, it wasn't us, I think. At least that's what the scientists think as well. But the question being, so what's happening then? What's going on? Well, first of all, by 2020, it looked like the rise of methane was the fastest ever recorded. And so several studies in the last few years suggested that it's probably coming from various tropical wetlands, most likely in Africa with previous conclusions suggesting that the wetlands most likely got much bigger because of a previous human-caused climate change, allowing a lot more plants to grow here that now started to decompose, producing huge amounts of methane today. With this basically now being referred to as the wetland hypothesis. And though there's definitely some evidence for this that was mostly presented in previous studies, there could also be other sources as well. Agricultural, biomass burning, waste emissions. For example, here's various contributions from different types of farm animals. Basically, cow farts. And although it's unclear what exactly the source is yet, what's clear is that it's definitely growing bigger and bigger, but more worryingly, resembling previous emissions from previous termination events. That last stage that would usually last a few decades, resulting in the temperature jumping by several degrees and lasting for several thousand years. And that's the main message from this new study. It hints that we might be in yet another termination event just like thousands of years ago, that might suddenly transform the planet in mere decades. And though in this case, human activity is maybe not the highest contributor, all of this did start because of human activity previously. And so there's no exact proof just yet, but it's definitely an intriguing proposition. Although here it's also important to remember that it is kind of expected. We do expect Earth to warm up at some point or another. Remember, this is still Ice Age. And because we still have polar ice sheets, we're still technically in the glaciation period that's turning into interglacial period that's supposed to reach a peak sometimes in the future. And though this unusual stability in climate allowed humans to evolve so dramatically, leading to what's known as Neolithic Revolution, 
establishing human civilization, we don't really know where all this is headed just yet. But it's not all doom and gloom. First of all, we know that methane, unlike CO2, is not a permanent greenhouse gas. So even though it's technically much more potent, up to 80 times more potent for at least two decades, it generally tends to be destroyed by the sun within about 12 years. In other words, if we actually find a way to potentially stop methane emissions right now, reducing the overall levels even higher, a lot of this methane will get disintegrated by solar radiation by mid-2030s. But honestly, at this point, nobody really knows what's going on, other than the observations that it does seem to be happening pretty quick for reasons still unknown. And with 2023 being the hottest year on the record, yeah, that means that maybe 2024 is going to be even hotter. But we're not going to know much more until future investigations, and so at least for now we're just going to leave it at that. We don't really know what's happening. But if it is a termination event, and if the planet is going to be warming up dramatically for the next few decades, I'm gonna have to buy a bigger fan. Anyway, we'll definitely discuss this in some of the future videos, if there are additional explanations, or someone actually figures this out. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.